It's going to be a November to remember. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Hulkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube, wherever you want to download your podcast, the show is always free, and the show always appreciates your support. All right. So, um, in 2022, remember way back when Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, they came over to USC. They helped make USC football fun again for the fans, for Trojan fans. I mean, it was a roller coaster ride. You know, it was fun. It has its highs, it had its lows, peaks, valleys, things that made you go, whoa, things that made you go, whoa. But um, yeah, you know. With that ride, you had, I don't know, another Heisen Trophy Award, eight. You found yourself in the conference championship game. So despite USC's first playoff appearance, kind of just limping around the field in that conference championship game, let's be honest, November was fun. 11 wins still feels a whole heck of a lot better than winning four games and feeling like a loser. Feels a lot better than winning eight games and feeling like you're average. USC was playing meaningful, meaningful games again in November, and that's the way it was supposed to be. That's the way it's always supposed to be at USC. Depending on how the Trojans do this year in their first three games, which includes LSU and Michigan, <laughs> The Trojans could find themselves with the home field advantage when the month of November rolls around. And I'll, let me explain. So you have USC and LSU playing in Las Vegas. They're kicking off the season against each other. Las Vegas kick, kickoff classic. And then USC is going to come home. They're going to play Utah State. They're going to take a week off, have a bye. And then they're going to go play in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Heading to the big house for the first time since 19. 19- 58. Yeah, I wasn't even around then. So that first game USC has against the LSU, I'll say it right now. First team to 35, they're going to win the game. What happens in Ann Arbor, that's going to be the catalyst. After that, the rest of USC's tough games, they're actually played at home in LA. All of them. You have Alex Grinch, Wisconsin. They stop by the end of September. Uh, <clears throat> that game. And then you have uh, two weeks into October, Penn State. That's the other marquee name from the big conference that's heading over uh, to play USC at home at the Coliseum. USC also has Minnesota, Maryland, and Rutgers. Okay, those games are all kind of dangling on the vine in October um, before November arrives. So if USC is 3-0, or let's say they're even 2-1 after those first three games, I would have to imagine the team's confidence level is going to swell. I mean, no one's picking SC to have a really good year. Remember, the over-under is, what, seven wins, seven and a half? For as difficult as USC's schedule is, and it is a difficult schedule, don't anybody tell you it's not, including ESPN's computer, uh, I think it becomes very advantageous uh, in November. And, if again, USC's building on the season that's going along. In November, they don't have to leave L.A. That's the benefit. That helps. Big time. Um, and they'll be, they'll, what they'll done is they'll, they'll have proved that they're capable of playing a big boy football again, right? Best case scenario, they beat both LSU and Michigan. Remember back in 2020, in 2003, excuse me, uh, no one gave USC a chance when they were playing Auburn 
on the planes, Jordan Hare Stadium. We all know what happened there. I don't think USC is going to go into the big house and leave with a 23 to nothing victory. Stranger things have happened. Appalachian State went in there and won a game. <laughs> yeah. So who knows? The Trojans have four games scheduled in November. And that also includes um, USC's second bye week. So USC will open the month in Seattle. Okay, they're going to be playing against the Huskies. We know USC is familiar with that stadium. They're familiar with it late in the year. So weather really isn't going to be an issue. Jed Fish has taken over that program. They're kind of in a rebuild mode, despite being in the you know championship game last year. This is not the same Washington Huskies team returning in 2024. But after that, everything is in LA. Every, the road to USC's playoffs, all on Highway 10, along the 10 freeway. USC hosts Nebraska. Then they're going to go to UCLA. And then they have the finale at home against Notre Dame. So literally, the simple fact that USC will be playing meaningful games this November, I mean, that's really a sign of how much this team, how much the program improved in less than a year. And, we're, you know, look, we're talking about the deepest side of the ball. Assuming USC gets to that UCLA game, at either they're either 10 and 1, or let's say for argument's sake, they're 9 and 2. Okay. A win over the Bruins. That's going to put the Trojans at the big conference championship game, at least at the doorstep. You got, a, you got other, you know, teams that are fighting for that as well. You got Ohio State. We'll see what happens with Michigan after the USC game. Oregon is considered one of the conference favorites. We'll see. But again, USC beats UCLA in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl. USC's playoff, uh, well, again, they're standing, they're going to be standing at the doorstep of the big conference championship game. And but even before then, you still have the game against Notre Dame in November. Preseason number five, Notre Dame. So if you're one of those Trojan fans out there that thinks this game shouldn't be played anymore. Ask yourself this. Do you still feel this way? Two highly ranked programs, USC and Notre Dame, playing in November for the chance to make the playoffs? I mean, are you still upset that USC versus Notre Dame on primetime TV during the holidays when everyone's gathered together? Is that really a bad thing? I mean, teams typically get better as the season rolls along. USC with wins against LSU and or Michigan, putting those under their belt, it's going to help them in November. They'll be able to taste what's ahead of them. Sold out Coliseum, national TV games, playoffs on the line. Yeah. None of that sucks at all. USC in November, meant to be. Could be a November to remember this year. <clears throat> a lot of people are, you know, are counting USC out. They're not picking them. Well, it's all right. Maybe having you, maybe USC being the underdog this year isn't necessarily a bad thing. Having that chip on your shoulder, all right. Don't believe in it. Let's see how you're feeling after USC and LSU and USC versus Michigan. We're going to talk about this a lot more before then, but let me know how you feel now. You looking forward to November? I am. Passion, drive, and patience. Home of the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. 
and with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. I know. You're watching Fox Sports. Switching the channel. Going over ESPN all day long. Kind of flipping. But all day long, you're hitting that mute button because everybody's screaming and shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel, and it's programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest news stories without all the yelling. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, and it's streaming for you 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My everydayers who listened to yesterday's episode of Locked On USC you heard me mention an offensive lineman's name that Coach Riley and Coach Josh Henson, they were eyeballing. They were, uh, he was on USC's campus the other day for their junior elite day. And uh, I said it could be any day now that Elijah Vicona, he's a mammoth, mammoth, huge interior offensive lineman from Rancho Santa Margarita Catholic High School. I said he was going to be getting an offer. You know? He got his offer. Um, yeah, six six foot eight, three hundred. I'm gonna say three hundred fifty pounds plus. Um, he had a really good performance at the elite camp, and because of that, he earned himself an offer. There is actually a picture of Coach Henson standing right next to Vacona, standing side by side. If you've seen Josh Henson by himself, he is not a small person. He is. Easily six foot four, 260, 270. Looks like an offensive lineman. But when he was standing next to six foot eight, 350 pounds, Coach Henson looked like a midget. He looked tiny. He looked like a regular person. <laughs> That's hard to do. Uh, I believe I read over on wersc.com that Vicona is actually heading up to Washington this weekend for a visit. Didn't set. Didn't specify if it was official or unofficial, but it, Washington is one of his 20-plus uh, offers that he has. So, again, the young man, uh, he's he was kind of under the radar. He's now starting to pop. And, again, he's got his whole senior season to play, so more offers are probably going to roll in. So even though he's going up to Washington this weekend, he will be back on USC's campus next week. And just a reminder, this young man, He's got Trojan blood coursing through his veins. If you heard the show on, if you heard yesterday's episode of Locked on USC, you heard me say this. His great grandfather attended USC 82 years ago. His grandfather is a USC Trojan. His mom is a USC Trojan. Yeah. Hey, do me a favor. When you're done making Locked on USC your first listen, Make sure you're taking advantage of WeRSC.com's $1 subscription special right now. Yeah, take advantage of it. That way, when you're done making Locked on USC, your first listen, when you're done with the show, you can head on over there and you can read the rest of why Gus Cordova, defensive lineman, commit, why he shut it down. I gave you a, you know, a couple bits and pieces the other day. You can now go read the whole story because Eric McKinney did an interview with him. Really good piece. I'm going to give you a couple of things from it. You can go read the rest of it over there. Cordova said that his decision came down to two things, both wanting to end the constant communication from coaches at other programs and also just feeling a deep connection with USC staff and the program itself. He said there's like 20 to 25 schools that, were pursue that are still pursuing him, and he was getting um, recruiting messages you know, constantly, just consistently, every day. Phone was blowing up. Oklahoma, Ohio State, Georgia, Michigan, Miami, Texas, Texas A&M. Those are just some of the big-time marquee names uh, that are still chasing after Gus. Quote, 
I really am feeling USC. So I just wanted to kill two birds with one stone and make it really official. Adding the USC staff knew it was coming, but was happy to hear it regardless. Now, Gus will be back on USC's campus um, for the June 21st weekend bash. So two weeks, not this coming weekend, next weekend. All right, this weekend is Father's Day weekend, the weekend after. That's when he will be back. Uh, he's coming with, you know, you got the other uh, commitment, Justice Terry, and they're coming along. Other guys who Gus Cordova and Justice Terry are going to try and convince that LA is the place to be. Um, I mentioned the names once, twice. Well, here's again, third, fourth, fifth time. I don't know. Elijah Griffin. Yeah. Big time prospect from Georgia. Jared Smith, the edge rusher from Alabama. Trajan Odom, defensive lineman from North Carolina. Brandon Brown. Yeah. Another big size interior defensive lineman uh, from Texas or Florida. One of the two. Anyways, football happy state. All those guys are going to be on campus June 21st for their, their official visit weekend. Remember, we use the F word around here. Things are fluid. Things could change. But as of today, right now, they are scheduled to be on USC's campus for that official visit weekend. Now, Gus did mention that he's not a real vocal, active recruiter, but he does try to do his part on social media. Uh, so when he sees something that's, you know, USC related, uh, he will always, you know, throw his two cents in there, so to speak. Remember how I said um, that this type of stuff kind of resonates with other recruits? Well, here's my backup. For all you out there who doubt what I say sometimes, who think you're smart, well, guess what? This is what Gus had to say. I'm really excited. Lots of people are already making the choice to come on down to USC. The more people to go, the more people are going to realize that's home. The people who come down on their official visit, most of them will commit. I feel because they don't really realize it until you're actually there. But it's really hard to beat, end quote. So yeah, the vibe, it's resonating. What the players are saying, it's resonating. USC is kind of the hot chick right now. We'll see what happens. Gus said that there's a, he's also, a, he does a lot of his work on social media. He said he's part of a group chat with a, a bunch of the guys who are in this class already, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So he is working behind the scenes. He is now, finger quotes, officially shut it down. Uh, he made it public, told everybody, leave me alone. Kind of like he took a page out of Robert Woods' book. Remember when Robert Woods did this when he uh, committed to USC? He literally chased some UCLA coaches off Sarah's campus. Said, Get out of here. I told you I didn't want to talk to you. Anyways, uh, another thing. Oh, one more thing. Recruiting note. Remember this name. Fletch Palmer. Plays quarterback. You might recognize the last name. And if you're a Chevy Chase fan, you probably also recognize the name Fletch. Well... Carson Palmer's kid. Yeah. His name's Fletch Palmer. Love the name. Already. <laughs> Gets an A from me in that. Uh, Carson's boy. Yeah, he's playing quarterback. Ran through Santa Margarita High School. Uh, he looks just like his dad. And he's going to be just as big as his dad. He's already, he's good. He's a freshman. He's already six, six foot two. And he, he's got that same presence behind center when you see him lining up. You know, the, the hands, the way he holds them, the shoulders, the hips, that haunch. It was recognizable. And I was like, whoa, that's a young Carson Palmer. So we'll see. I wonder, I'm wondering if he's on Lake Lincoln Riley's radar yet. Again, he's just going into his freshman season. He'll be playing quarterback at Rancho Santa Margarita Catholic High School, Orange County, California. Which, by the way, should probably drop this note here right now. Um, coming up, I will be doing an interview with Killian O'Connor, this year's backup center to Jonah Monheim. That will be coming up next week. So stay tuned. Make sure you're hitting that bell notification button. That way you will not miss an episode. You're going to keep the show growing. If you're not a subscriber, do it now. Right now. 
hit that red subscribe button. Smash that thumbs up. I got actually, I've got some interviews lined up. So first we got Killian O'Connor. I already told you I got JD Piquel. That thing's lined up, set. We're going to get that going. And I'm going to have some more USC players coming up as well, making it a series. Hey, it's that time. It's Friday. I guess I'm going to rant about. I got something on my chest. And this thing actually really, this pissed me off when I heard about it. I was really, I wouldn't say I was like mad. I punched the walls mad, but I was upset. It's like, really? Is there any common sense left? Is there, is there anybody out there that still respects college football's traditions and what makes it so special? Unfortunately not. At least it feels that way. The Army-Navy game no longer gets its own day. Done. That piece of tradition, gone. Both the Camellia Bowl and the Celebration Bowl are going to be played on the same day. So, again, another piece of college football's tradition just being tossed aside. The Army-Navy game is one of the most iconic, in, an, in my book, one of the most revered rivalries in all of college football. And, it, and it's because it goes deeper than just playing the game. I mean, this goes back, way back before I was even born, right? Army, Navy, that was the game. Heisman Award winners. This is where your admirals, your generals, Young men who are signing up to protect what we love most, college football. Everything that allows us to enjoy college football. That's what these young men sign up to do when they go to Army or they go to the Naval Academy. Unfortunately, because of the expanded college football playoffs and the new bowl schedule, the Army-Navy game is going to be played on the same day as those two bowl games that you've probably never heard of before. It'll be in December. Bowl season director Nick uh, Caparelli, Carparelli, excuse me, explain the reasons for the change. Obviously, the expanded college football playoff is going to add another level of, of excitement to our postseason. With the opening round games being played on that Saturday, that had traditionally been reserved for the first day of bowl season, we were forced to move some games to the week prior to that, notably two games on December 14th, which were scheduled around the Army-Navy game. And he added, it was very important to us that we protected that time slot, but at the same time providing a full day of college football, which I think our fans will enjoy, end quote. Those aren't the only college football-related things happening that day, December 14th. Oh, by the way, later that night, the Heisman Trophy is going to be awarded. I'm sorry. This is wrong. I don't know one player's names on either roster. Doesn't matter. I don't care. It, it doesn't make a difference. The Army-Navy game, for me, that was all about the pomp and circumstance. The flyovers. The two schools, you know, fighting on the field against each other, but will fight for each other. And some of these young men, you probably should learn. I probably should learn, learn their last names. Because some of these young men and women, well, they're not playing in the game, they're going to die for this country. For the game they love, that we love. And they can't even get their own day? Serious? What really bothers me is the lack of any type of common sense that's ever used. Right? These dudes, these young men, they deserve their own day one day out of the college football year to celebrate young men who are making more sacrifices each day than you or I do in a week or a month. So I came up with an idea. Since we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater anyways, right? Let's start a new tradition for the Army-Navy game. Let's move the game to Veterans Day. It's in November. Let's celebrate our future veterans. 
This year, Veterans Day falls on a Monday. I already checked the calendar. November 11th. I don't Maybe Monday Night Football can figure out a way to make this happen. If you're going to share your day, let's get the, the guys who love the NFL. Let's get those eyeballs watching this game. I'm sure they do. The game is usually played in Philadelphia. Let's make it a doubleheader. How's that? This game needs to, it, this game by itself, it needs to remain a featured game. It is part of the fabric of college football, part of our DNA, it's who we are. And I just think if if we move it into the postseason with these minor bowl games, I think we're going to lose a generation of fans who can appreciate what young men and women who who join the Naval Academy, who go to West Point, what it all means, what it's all about. Because that's the story that's told during the game. It's not like we're watching our future NFL players. These guys have other commitments when they finish college before they can even consider going to the NFL. That's how important this game is. And why it really ticked me off to find out that, hey, you know what? It's just Army Navy. We can let them celebrate with a celebration bowl and the Camellia Bowl. Oh, and by the way, there's a Heisman ceremony at the end of the night, too. Change is neither good or bad, but sometimes there's too much change. And I think we're going through too much change right now. We're starting to lose what we love, and that's college football. I'm here to try and bring it back, slow it down. I mean, we haven't even done, we haven't even started the 12 team playoff format yet. And they already want to expand to 14 teams. Slow down. Enjoy the process. Smell the roses. See the scenery. All right. I will be back with another five episodes next week. I also will have a special episode, as I mentioned. I think I'm going to air that Sunday. Killing O'Connor. Backup center. We're going to find out what he's all about. So until then, everyone. You know what to do.